Hello there everyone, welcome to the World of Movers podcast and on this episode of Reflections and Reactions we're going to have a bit of reflection on the um, London rally uh, on the 1st of June that was arranged by Tommy Robinson. So, um, I went there and on purpose I went there on my own because I wanted to show people that it was pretty safe um, afterwards, right? Because there were a lot of people who were hyping it up as if like, oh, it's a racial event or something. It's going to be racist people over there or it's far right. Obviously, I knew it wasn't uh, the case. And um, I decided to go on my own and see the lay of the land and you know take pictures and take videos from uh, within the crowd to show people that it was actually a really good event it was it was a really good event was well organized and kudos to tommy robinson it was pretty pretty good uh but before uh we get into that i just wanted to um ask you if you like this video to like subscribe and share with others and uh, if you want to i'll be doing a write-up um sort of a write-up of the event and of this um sort of summarizing this video itself as well on my sub stack and that um Everything on my Substack is free to view, but uh, payments are voluntary if you want to be a paid member. That can help me a lot as well. So you can go to theworldofmomus.com and that's my Substack, theworldofmomus.com. Thank you. Now, back to the thoughts. Hmm. So, went there um, to Victoria Station where everyone was gathering. And, um, you know, as people were gathering, it was getting more and more jovial. So it wasn't getting, um, you know, you would expect um, as, as more people are gathering in, in a rally that, um, you know, the things are going to get more tense or anything. But actually, the more people started joining, the more jovial, the more fun, the more, um, you know, the more singing and things like that started happening. And it's, all of a sudden, it started feeling safe. You felt safe. You felt like you were among your countrymen. You were among your well-meaning uh, people, and, and was just like it was just that atmosphere. You, you could feel, you could feel that these are real people with real emotions, and you know who don't hide behind fake um, narratives and stuff. <laughs> Then, um, after um, people had gathered for a while, um, and there were, you know, there was quite a, a lot of people. You couldn't like really make out how much while you were in the middle of it, but you could see like because it was jam packed. And then we all started walking, right, and sort of marching towards the parliament from Victoria um, Station. So we're about to start the march. Thousands and thousands have travelled here from across the country. We're going to go send a message to the establishment and the police. Resignmarkrowley.com. Cut the head off the snake. You've betrayed our country. You've oppressed our people. You've treated us like these of shit. And even then, it wasn't... Um... It wasn't anyone jump jumping over another or whatever the case might be. Again, I'll play a video right now of when we started marching because I was taking that video. So as you've seen in that video now, there wasn't as if like, you know, there was a stampede or anything like that. And, you know, it was it wasn't people falling over each other. They were there were old people, there were young people, you know, kids were there, there were men, there were women, you know, help, people helping each other out, uh, you know, people on wheelchair, you know, everything was, was you know, going smoothly as it can be. People were walking at their pace, they were singing along the way, you know, they were just having a good time of it, they were just showing um, solidarity and 
yeah so we we kept on walk you know we went towards the uh, parliament and they, they are actually uh, in in the middle i'll show you the uh, video that, that was in in the middle as well um and there were a lot of instances but this is the one that i caught where people were singing tommy robinson's name as they were marching and there was a lot of uh singing of his name again and again <laughs> It was just, it was just heartwarming to see that, um, you know, any politician <laughs> can't even dream of such loyalty, of such uh, love, um, you know, and respect for a guy who has been maligned by everyone, by the media, uh, by other politicians, um, you know, and by by even by people who 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 um, pretend to be on the side of the people, right? Uh, even news organizations like GB News who say, oh, they're the, uh, you know, uh, channel of the people or whatever they call themselves, home of free speech or whatever. Even they didn't cover this event properly, right? They didn't cover it at all. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, Any anything off there. Uh, they might have had, um, you know, a few comments here or there, but not like a, they, they didn't run a live, coverage of the event which they should have done as, as well but because they can't because they don't want to associate themselves with uh tommy robinson the same thing nigel farage has done right the night nigel farage called these people that attended that day like 10 20 000, i don't know how many they were he called themselves what football hooligans he called them you know whatever um you know bigots or whatever the terms that he used uh, and you could see like whoa there's a huge disconnect even the even the people on the right who pretend to be uh, for the working class people within politics there's a huge disconnect between them and the actual people actual working class people that's same for the labor same for the tories same for reform party now as well there's not not many parties that actually can connect with the working class people because they don't live their lives because they don't understand them they don't communicate with them you know as human beings they only communicate at them and what i saw is what i've seen in my line of work as well um which obviously i don't reveal um you know i i i understand the issues i understand um the things that they're going through so you know there, there is a connection there as well which you know which i which made it comfortable for me to be amongst them anyway so you know because i feel of them um they're they're real people you know they're, they're straightforward real people tommy robinson leads football hooligans in london right? go and look, look at that crowd yeah. women old people disabled people Sikhs, asians blacks normal people ex-servicemen that the media are the enemy that's why you use it that's why citizen journalism new startups aren't controlled by the corporations that control the narrative are important so. yeah i mean and, and it just shows that people are just even people like you know uh, the new media podcasters some of some of them not obviously not all of them some of them or who are of the liberal bend um who might be against the organization or against the establishment but they're still of the liberal bend even they are they follow the same narrative oh like he's a far right thug and blah blah stuff like that yeah, just um you have to go beyond the news. You have to go beyond your programming, right? You have to get to know the actual thing. You have to understand why people love him so much as well. Because, you know, he's the only one to them who is actually standing up and and understand their problems. He lives amongst them. You know, he's off them sort of a thing. He speaks their language. While others are just speaking at them, they just want to tell them how to live their life, how what to think and what what to do, what is best for them. But now these people know what's best for them. Like it is, it's enough pandering um, of that sort. So yes, there were a few instances um, which I saw along the way. Um, you know, I've I've seen some of these posts made by these islamist nut jobs these islamist mouthpiece of five pillars you know it just shows like 
seriously people of that sort it just shows how much they hate britain and how much they hate british people and i think so it's time to end our association with islam as such right it shouldn't be welcome anymore so i saw some instances of of like yeah if people um people had to urinate somewhere you know um the police asked all the pubs to be shut down along the way uh, which was pretty stupid i think so they could have made a lot more money uh, if the shops and uh, pubs were open before the event or after afterwards for it you know there were there were no portable uh, loos anywhere so you know what do you expect people to do uh, by either way like it's it, it was minimal amount of people like it was a very small minority who did that and the next day it rains every day anyway so it's just all gonna wash out like it was just making a big fuss out of nothing um i didn't i didn't see any much of the disorderly sort of uh, conduct um i think so there were only two arrests so that shows you 10 20 thousand people who they were calling all football hooligans which is very funny actually i forgot to mention so when i got into liverpool street to go to victoria cross um because i don't live in london so i had to get to liverpool street to get get into victoria cross or whatever I saw, like when I was getting the tube, the circle line from uh, Liverpool Street, there were uh, there were people in the tube who were getting out, and they as as soon as the tube was uh, going to stop, they started bashing on the doors of the tube, you know, and singing and stuff like that. You know who he those were? They were um, German and Spanish hooligans, you know, but nobody wants to mention that, right? They were the ones who were causing dis disturbance at that time and probably did afterwards as well. But nobody would mention that, right? And there were these 10 to 20,000 patriots who came, right? And only two arrests were made, which I don't even know if they were valid or not, or what happened, or who agitated them, or, you know, whatever the case might be. But only two arrests were made and and everything was peaceful. So that shows you like the narrative is wrong. You need to wake up from your programming. But anyways, uh, yeah, uh, Five Pillars also made a f big fuss about the chance that uh, a lot of people were um, not a lot of people. There was there was a group of people who were doing that only uh, with the whole um, event. It wasn't like around ten to twenty thousand people. There were less than you know fifty people, whatever, who were chanting like you know Allah Allah, who the fuck is Allah, right? Um, or whatever they were chanting like that. Um, yeah, I mean, who the fuck is Allah? who the fuck cares right fuck Allah but yeah I mean people th this is the this is the issue right so we're supposed to have free speech we're supposed to um, be able to express our negative opinions of a negative ideology right but they think that their sensibilities should matter to us now I'm sorry but your religion is false your prophet has did atrocious things we should be able to express our opinion of him he's your religion is not native to these lands if you have sensibilities i think so this time you consider relocating somewhere where your sensibilities can be catered to because quite frankly nobody gives a shit anymore over here and nobody should but either way you know and they were saying oh like there were some kids i think so there were some traveler kids or uh, whatever who were chanting you know the same fuck Allah um, chants along with the adults and stuff so I don't care or rather have like I know a lot of people have made a fuss out of it oh keep the children out blah 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 stuff like that it's you know you you you're giving them the emanation to complain about something right just ignore it just completely ignore it or just say so what you know and move on gotta unite the right in that sense at least you know 
And you know, quite frankly, I'd rather have the kids say fuck Allah than be martyred in the name of Allah, right? And they're making such a big fuss out of it. And they're saying like, because of those chants, those, those people, this little group of people that were doing it, less than 50 people in, in a group of 10 to 20,000 uh, people, they're saying that is a hate, hate march, right? Well, 90 to 100% of, of your people in the pro-Palestine one, they weren't chanting against a god. They were chanting for the death of actual real people, of the destruction of an actual real state of Israel. Right? I think so. That is a bit of a problem. Right? How many, how many of these five pillars have come out uh, squealing uh, when we see pictures uh, of Hamas kids with guns and like whatever? None. They don't say anything. Like, seriously, guys, stop pandering to the Muslims. They, all they have is lies and deceit. And they will use that against us in every opportunity. I think so. Liberals, most of the liberals, need to stop being cucks to Muslims. Right? Enough is enough in that sense. Um, because to them, you're all the same. To them, it doesn't matter. You know, they're just go going to use you and abuse you. So, anyways, I don't want to focus on that because it wasn't about them. Fuck them. So... Then we went to the event and there were a few people who um, gave their speeches. Lawrence Fox was there, Carl Benjamin was there, uh, among other people. Offering them a place that were offering these things, why wouldn't they? This should never have been allowed. This is why the country is creaking under the weight of immigration. Everything costs an unbelievable amount. The NHS is failing. You're not going, your children will not be able to buy houses. It used to be, when I was a teenager, the average house price was four times the national average wage. Now it's 12 times. And there were some video messages from Carl Robinson, uh, sorry, from uh, Calvin Robinson. Oh, Cal Calvin Robinson actually got a huge reception over there, which was good to see. It's kind of good to see the revival of Christianity as well, which is being centered around uh, his ideas and the free church of England as well. Uh, it was good to see and uh, Bob was there as well um, who who's at the speaker's corner most of the time um, yeah uh, uh, Tom Robinson brought him on towards the end it was very nice to see he brought on like a lot of people voice of Wales and a lot of other uh, podcasters and stuff just to give them a boost sort of thing uh, which is good which is good because these are the kind of people that we need um, uplifting and um yeah, we had a brilliant time, played some music, watched the, watched the documentary. I'll put the link of that documentary, Lawfare, uh, over either either over here on top or in the description below. It should be there anyways. And for the sub stack, I'll, I'll put the uh, link. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just put the streaming link so you can go and watch that uh, documentary. You should go and watch that documentary. You personally are not to remain here. I'm a journalist and I'm here to do my work. You are working under the orders of Sadiq Khan and Mark Rowley. Mark Rowley is an apologist for Hamas. They're apologists for jihad. And the British public are fed up of your two-tier policing. Political policing is damaging. What the law seems to say is the police can do whatever they want to do. And yet when they march down with hundreds of Palestinian flags, you won't say a word. The violence only ever seems to go one way. Oh, children! We need a free press to be a free people. A far-right a far right right commemoration. Far right parties. Journalism and reporters, uh, they have a club, they have a clique. I think a two-tier justice system and a two-tier policing system is a existential threat to democracy. It's getting people to realise what is the truth before the trap closes on us and uh, we're going to be in a pretty dark place. The police officer has been shot dead. If we continue going as we're going, independent voices will be snuffed out entirely. Are you going to stand with the people who are fighting for freedom? 
Or are you going to try and self-preserve for one more day? Uh, yeah, uh, overall, I, I would say like it was it was a brilliant event, and people really loved it. Um, it was good being just amongst the people because you know I'm fairly unknown. So, um, but I do want to say thanks to um, some of my followers uh, from Substack and elsewhere who came to say hi. So thank you for that. Um, but you know I'm rel relatively unknown, so it was easier for me to be among the crowd and just talk talk with random people and just get the feel. This way welcoming people, way um a warm hearted quick to laugh you know sort of people it, it, just the real people you know the kind of people that i like so yeah i felt very comfortable i felt very safe and um yeah even when when the event was over even going back um i just tagged along with uh people wearing um english flags and stuff like that because it felt safe being among them and they were you know they were making sure everyone is safe but a, a huge a huge thank you thanks to all the stewards as well because there were a lot of volunteer stewards from everywhere who helped organize the event to make sure everything was going right and they helped they were actually coming around and uh with bin bags and making sure all the you know rubbish and stuff is picked up so you know they left the area clean as well parliament square which was really good to see it was overall it was really good and on the way back as well you know, like I said, I, I was just amongst uh, those people who were talking to me. Good to talk to people, basically. Just just talk, you know. And a huge thank you to the guy as well who was... Um, two, two of the people who I was talking to, one of them came from Derby. And the other one from Birmingham. It, it was just... It was just nice just, just talking um, with people like that. And it, it just shows, like, everyone has different... Had different stories. Why they were there. You know how they have been let down by the government, how they've been let down by their politicians, how they've been let down by their local services, and so on and so on. And one of this guy who was from Derby, like he was telling me how he used to work, um, you know, for the council, and just because he didn't want it to put up the LGBTQ plus 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 flag, that he was reprimanded for it. And basically, you know, he ended up leaving um, his job with the council and stuff. And this, this, this is happening in many other councils. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, you know, that that we have to follow these rules. Un otherwise, we will be struck off. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't like this kind of rules and stuff. But it was good to. S hear people talk about it because everyone had different experiences some had about um vaccinations being forced on them vaccine jabs being forced onto them covid jabs uh otherwise they'll lose their job if they think like that they lose their job if they say something about islam they'll lose their job like you know this this is not where we want to be but this is why we need to give voice to these frustrations you know and these were good people. All of them were good people. And if we don't articulate their frustrations appropriately, as we should be doing, what will end up happening is that we're going to push them to the extreme. And that, that's, that will break the heart and the soul of this country. But I didn't, uh, what, I didn't see that happening. I, I saw these people getting behind a movement getting behind not just Tommy Robinson but people around him and, and his ideas and stuff uh, of that sort which is good which is good because if we have that then we don't have people going to the extreme and that is very important you know it's very nice people you know there was English there was Welsh there was Scots there was Irish the people from some people from Canada saw some people from America as well. There are people from everywhere, you know. So yeah, I think so. It was a good event. Good, good people. Um, good.
could get together hopefully a lot of people will be there on the 27th of july as well which is the next one uh hopefully we can make it a more of a party more of a party scene than now but yeah those were my thoughts about that event um please like subscribe and share and uh, go on tommy robinson's uh podcast his uh, his books and stuff go and go and read them up and uh, but most importantly go and watch these documentaries uh especially the rape of britain and lawfare uh currently one um because they, they tell you those documentaries tell you the real problems and you can hate or like him it doesn't it doesn't matter it goes beyond him uh what these documentaries are trying to tell you anyways thank you for listening take care and be good